My love of flying uh, started when I was a little kid, actually. My dad was responsible for that. I've got photos at home of me, about yay big, sitting me on the wheel of a Cessna 180, I think it was, and playing with radio control models. And it just, the disease grew and it just got worse and worse and I had to go flying before I went to work and flying after I went to work. These models in the paddocks around town. In my early teens, I was 15 and 16, I was flying gliders before I could drive a car. In the end, I managed to fly some of the most exotic World War II airplanes, fighters and trainers in the world, including the Sea Fury, which is the fastest, still the fastest piston engine production airplane ever built. Mark 0.78, two and a half thousand horsepower in one seat. It's awesome. Every year, thousands of students across the country begin their flight training. Whether it's overcoming fear, a career in aviation, or the enjoyment of flying, students start by enrolling in flight school. On the Sunshine Coast, Go Fly Aviation, operated by Damien Wills and his team of instructors, work hard, have fun, and teach everyday people to fulfil their dream of taking flight. OK, guys, we've got uh, two new students starting this week. Um, first guy is named Stephen. Uh, he's just flying for fun. Um, he is a nervous flyer. Apparently he gets very nervous going on, on commercial airliners and he wants to learn to fly to overcome his fear of flying. So that should be interesting. So you two guys will be mainly flying with him uh, okay. and possibly Joel. Okay. Uh, we've also got a guy from New Zealand. Uh, he'll be doing his instructor um, riding with myself and converting to um, Australian light sport aircraft. When, um, when you guys are up there flying, let me know how it is and then we'll make a decision with the weather changing, yeah. okay? I started flying when I was 15 years of age. Um, had my CPL by the time I was 18, and I uh, got a job as a charter pilot in the Northern Territory uh, by the time I was 19. After about three or four years of um, doing charter, um, I realised I didn't want to be an airline pilot, um, so I came back to the East Coast. The flying school I was flying, um, instructing at, um, was for sale, and they offered it to me, and I, I purchased the flying school. The organization I was working for um, decided to uh, change their staffing requirements. Um, and I happened to be one of those um, staffing requirements. So then when I was, as I was thinking, I was like, well, what am I going to do next? And I remember a plane flying over my house. I remember looking up the sky and going, I, I actually think I want to go back into flying. It's a wet day at the Caloundra Aerodrome. Mahindra is working towards his recreational pilot certificate. Having completed the foundational lessons that enable him to operate the aircraft, he is embarking on the next part of his training, circuits. This is where he'll begin to take what he has learnt so far and combine it into a six minute cell. Keep it straight with our rudder paddocks, straight down the runway, and balance in the throttle. Nathan moved from New Zealand to pursue his flying career in Australia. Having never flown a sling aircraft before, Damien is taking him through the pre-flight check before they head out into the training Let's area. Come up now. Yeah. It's about halfway. That's fine. Okay. Put your hand on that. Your both feet on the seat. That's it. Wait. While Nathan is becoming familiar with the sling, Joel is teaching Mahindra the finer points of completing circuits. Mahindra is settling into his circuits, but the weather is beginning to close in. Speed is good. 
Probably faster, is that? Yep, speed is great. So how are we going to fix the height? Uh, we're going to pitch down a little bit. No read of descent. Be careful where. Where descent is your power. So okay. back a little bit on the power. That'll help you out. Good. And I'm ready to turn on. Clear right, and above left and behind. Center. Good, mate. See how getting that check in before mm -hmm. will help you out a little bit. But that's beautiful. Uh, I can't believe how good it is up here. Yeah. Now. I was just thinking that, like, I've never been on a final when it's not been bumpy. Yeah. Okay, so, this is looking really good. Aileron keeps the wings level. Yep. And Use your rudders just to get us back onto that center line. So we need to go that way a little bit. Good. As we get closer, just power back just a fraction and nose yep. down. Just lose that just that 50 feet that we've climbed. Goes down a little bit for me. Power coming back. Power coming back, keep it coming back. Flare. And hold, 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 hold. Bit of right rudder for me. A right rudder? Yeah. So we weren't quite straight. Okay. That's all right, full power, let's go. Back in the office, Jeremy receives an alert that may affect the afternoon's lessons. Jiminy Cricket, that's big. But what I'm concerned with is the development right there. You can actually see the storm clouds building over that tail. So imagine that you own a restaurant, and for one or two days a week, the, the council comes across and closes your road to your restaurant, and you can't trade for those one or two days. That pretty much sums up what it's like to run a flight school. So you have to really manage your cash flow well uh, and plan um, as much as you can for, for, that, for that weather contingency. It's Jeremy from GoFly, how are you? Oh, yeah, getting there. Um, Maybe I just gotta let you know that um, the flight's gonna have to be postponed and the weather is actually turning quite bad. They just canceled my flight lesson, which really sucks. I never sleep well the night before I'm flying and it's really deflating um, to, to think that you sort of you're psyching yourself up, getting ready to, to go up there and to, and to and to do this thing to to try and conquer um, some sense of fear. Okay, so that's sorted. So that means that I'm going to to two thirty. Then Ali will have to come on a Sunday, so long as Ali can do that, because he actually said that he might be going away soon. I think we'll deal, deal with that later. Being operations in the flight school, um, there's an enormous amount of priority changes. Um, and the complexities can be quite severe. So with the more instructors that you have, the more aircraft you have, the more students you have, and they're all kind of meshed together. So if, if, if it's not working in the cog, one flies out, then it affects every single other flight or could potentially affect every other flight. With the afternoon lessons canceled, the staff move quickly to house the planes before the weather front hits. The reason I decided to learn to fly is because I have a slight fear of turbulence. So whenever I'm going up in a plane, I'm, I'm fine until we actually hit bad weather or we actually hit some sort of bumps along the way. And then all of a sudden uh, the, the fear kicks in and I start thinking about worst case scenarios and how I'm gonna end up as a news story on the six o'clock bulletin. So I thought the easiest way to overcome this was actually learn about flight mechanics, um, go to flight school and learn how to fly. There's gonna be days where um, you will be challenged both physically and mentally um, learning to fly and that can be demotivational to a lot of, a lot of students. They think, wow, this is all too hard. Uh, I'm never gonna get there. So um, a part of the challenge is being good motivators to motivate that student and, and look at the big picture. Hey, yes, you're gonna have days where you, you go backwards. That, that's normal in, any, in, in the training, but you gotta look at the big picture. If you weren't a good motivator, a lot of students would give up on, on the process. Next time on Taking Flight. So Alex today is doing his first formal navigation lesson. We're going to start the lesson as soon as we get in the aircraft. We're going to taxi, you're going to find the aircraft.